G'day, Steve here, Room for Woodwork, in the corner of my bedroom in a 1.8 by 1.5 metre space. We've got a workshop all set up and we're starting to make things. The recent video we did was I made this shooting board, which I'll show you how to use in a practical sense with this project. Now this project is making something to hang on the wall. Originally, I was going to make a mirror, but in the meantime, my wife with her embroidery came up and did this beautiful embroidery here of a panda. This frame behind me, I did on a video over a couple of parts a while back and I used several planes to make that molding. But I'm gonna share with you here how you can make a fantastic frame that really looks unique, but you're only using one plane for the entire project. And then I'll show you something else you can do, which is a bit special, which whatever you put up there, even if you put a mirror in there, or if you do put an embroidery or a picture or a photo, you can really boost the impact of it. And that'll come after I've made the frame. So to start with, got to make the frame. Put this to one side, because if it gets dirty, I'm in trouble. Speaking of which, better pay the rent for the good lady. And there is her latest creation that she's just finished. Pretty special that one, I like that one. And that will be available, and I believe it's gonna be for sale, on Crafty Old Women when the website finally gets up, which shouldn't be too long away. All right, paid the rent. Now I can be about my business. All I'm using, oh, before we get started, people that have watched Woodworking Masterclass have seen that I've got a fairly elaborate sticking board, which is what I use to hold uh, bits of timber when I'm actually making mouldings. And it's elaborate, it's got um, miters on it, it's got double height uh, uh, platforms that you can work on different pieces and come from the job from different angles. But as I promised, I think it was in Woodworking Masterclass, I said I've got a very, very simple one in Room for Woodwork, and this is it. And that's all it is. Just two bits of ply. As a matter of fact, it's ply joined together. I had a lot of quarter inch or six mil ply offcuts, 1.5 meters long, so I just glued them all together. The um, measurement on that, if you're interested, it's 130 mil, don't know what that is, that's um, six or seven inches I suppose, and the top bit is 50 mil or two inches, and it's about three quarter inch thick, and obviously at the back about an inch and a half, something like that. And that is as basic as you can get. You can use MDF, if you've got MDF, it's a lot cheaper, I don't uh, particularly like MDF, and I didn't have any spare offcuts, or else I might have used that, but Bearing in mind it doesn't have to be a piece of art, all it is is a platform so you can create pieces of art on it. So we'll start using that in a jiffy. I'll show you the timber that I've got, which is here. And the frame that I've um, decided I want to do for that panda embroidery is 300 long by about 200 high, give or take. And that means 1.6 meters or I don't know, what's that in feet and inches? Wouldn't have a clue. Uh, 1.6, gotta be four and a half foot, five foot, something like that. This sticking board isn't big enough. The one I've got down in the main workshop, it is. But what I've decided, as I want to keep this all in house, so those of you that are in apartments or small working areas, know that it can be done because I'm actually doing it here live. So instead of having one long piece, which I would love to work with, I've got two shorter pieces, so let's get started. First of all, put this to one side and we'll mark out the timber. I've got to put a rebate in the back. I'm using two mil glass again. I'm using three mil MDF to go in over the, it's gonna be glass, then the embroidery, then the MDF. What I have been doing, and I forget who it was or I'll give you acknowledgement, uh, they suggested I put fabric behind the MDF, behind the embroidery. That way, if there's any leakage or any stain coming out of the MDF, the sacrificial piece of fabric between the two will catch it and it won't go onto the embroidery or come through the print or whatever it is I'm uh, gonna frame. So that's a good idea to think of. Remember that MDF can stain, so 
put something in there to stop it from contacting from the bit of piece, the piece that you're going to have frayed. Whether it's um, acid-free paper or, I don't know, in the old days they used to use newspaper. But anyway, first things first, I have to mark out the depth of the rebate I'm going to put in and I work that out. It's two mil for the glass, three mil for the MDF, that's five mil, a mil for the embroidery and I've got to allow about two mil for the push pins that I use. So what's that? About eight mil all up? So we'll come down eight mil. That's set at eight mil. Now because I'm doing this in two parts, obviously I've got to mark both pieces and I do them all the same time with the same marks. Pick the face and if you'll notice, these aren't exactly brilliant faces, but it doesn't matter because the moulding I'm going to do is going to take all that surface away and I like working with a thicker timber as possible. Um, this by the way is 50 mil by about 22 mil, so that's two inch by seven eighths and it's chilly and myrtle. But any timber you've got, you can get hold of, uh, poplar, Tasmanian oak, I don't know, walnut, pine, um, anything. And these, these obviously can come out of the scrap bin. And now I want to mark in how far I want that rebate to go. And for me, 10 mil is fine. So I'll just reset my marking gauge to 10 mil. And on the top side, what I want to do is have sort of a wave effect happening. Now I'm going to divide this into four reasonably equal parts. Now you can do that by whatever the width is, dividing it by four and 50 by fours, I don't know, about 12 and a half or something. But a much easier way is get a ruler and then with the graduations, tilt your ruler until you can get something divisible by four. So if I have this on this edge here, I'll swing that around to 80, which is about there. Now four can go into 80 at 20. So I put a mark at 20, a mark at 40, and a mark at 60. And I've got one, two, three, four equal parts. Get my marking gauge. Actually, at this stage, I might just put a punch in there. And that's given me three marks and four divisions. Get my marking gauge, drop it into the first punch mark, draw a line. Pick up my other bit of timber. Same thing. Draw a line. Go to the next punch mark. This isn't critical. If you're a little bit out, if it moves, it just moved on me a little bit then. That's okay. And that's all the marking there is. Pop the marking gauge away. Someone actually wanted to see what's in there, so here's a photo of what that looks like. There you go. It's a great what you can put into small spaces when you actually have to think about what you're doing and you're limited, as I am with this space. Now I said I was going to do all this with just one plane, and I will. And that's the plane I'm using. It's an H&T Gordon rebate plane, the timber sandalwood, which is really, really nice. And it works a treat. Grab the sticking board, plump it down the bench, Get a couple of hold downs. Two should do us. Rub a mallet, knock them home. That's not going anywhere. 